So I figured it out. I didn't turn the water on. <laughs> All right. Don't mind the skeleton hand. We eat our victims. Well, screwed that up. So I turned on the water down below. And I thought, my water sounds like it's running. I hadn't plugged those lines yet. Behind me over here, where that gas line is, I went ahead and ordered a, um, a little gas on-demand hot water heater. I say little, but it's 5.3 gallons per minute, which is way more than we need for that bathroom. Um, the, the boiler we have that runs the radiant floors is definitely enough to heat everything in here, but the reason why we didn't do that is because it's, let's see, the boiler would be, pipe-wise, would be probably 80, 90 feet away. And boy, to push that amount of water through would take quite a while. It'd probably take good, probably take good 45 to 60 seconds to get uh, hot water over there. I was hoping to get that water heater hooked up, but as normal, I'm missing some parts. Um, I've got to go in here in a little bit to a meeting. I'll grab the parts while I'm in town. But as far as the boiler, not the boiler, the hot water, endless hot water tank here goes, this is a 6.5 gallon is how they advertised it. But then I noticed on the sheet here, it only says 3.3 uh, .3 gallons per minute. It's rated as a medium size one which is kind of odd because it should have been 6.5. But um, I paid more than I wanted to. I got a name brand one because all the other options I saw, the typical camper RV ones where you hang them outside and things like that, didn't have the best reviews, seemed to have uh, issues. Uh, this one had good reviews, but it was expensive. This was about $700 and um, is way more than we need for just one bathroom. But um, I'm hoping it will last a lot longer. You can't really get down to below a three gallon per minute. You can't even get below a five or a six unless you go to uh, one of those kind of RV camper ones or the outside ones where you hang them on a tree, things like that. Uh, those just didn't have, like I said, didn't have good, good ratings. There's issues with the flow on those. Where if you don't have enough flow, it won't kick on. So I didn't want to have it. That was the main problem with people at reviews that are in their sinks. Is where they turned the sink faucet on, there wasn't enough flow to activate the unit to actually start the boiler part. Um, I didn't want to have that happen. This, 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 that's why I bought a better brand. The top piece, this was one complaint that I definitely found on these units, that you pay a premium for the unit and they don't include a vent kit. So I had to order a vent kit, it's supposed to be here on Monday. Um, I was really hoping to get this set up this weekend because this is the last thing we need and then we can start taking showers out here. Um, we'll definitely have water uh, for the camper so we can actually take longer showers in there now. We all will have hot water down there, but this will give us access to the full tub upstairs, which would be nice. One thing real too quick before I forget is that you don't need to have an expansion tank on a uh, tankless water heater. Reason being is that it's a basically what's called an open loop, it means the water is not closed, being stored in something. So in a traditional hot water tank, your water sits in a tank and gets really hot and builds up pressure, and that's why you have to have that expansion tank. Uh, it's a closed system until you open the faucet. In this system, it doesn't make hot water or create pressure from the heat until you actually open the valve. So it's an open valve system. So the only reason why I need an expansion tank is if you're in a closed system where it's going to be building up pressure with no way to release it. Um, so I don't have an expansion tank on, 
on this one uh, or the hot water uh, side, domestic hot water side of the boiler system. Um, I do have an expansion tank for the radiant floors, and I'll get to that when I go over that, that uh, installation, um, because that's a closed loop system. I'm heating up water, sending it through the uh, radiant floor, and there's no way to release that, that pressure until it cools down. Um, so that's a closed loop system. I'll have an expansion tank on there. And it's a special system or a special tank for radiant floors. Uh, you have two different types. You have one for um, your typical hot water tank, and you have one for a radiant a tank or a boiler. Okay, I got back to my meeting, and the um, went good, by the way. Um, the girls showed up, and I was able to do some shopping while I was out, so I picked up all the parts I needed. So everything is set up now. I got my drain hose set up so I can flush it out. So in these filled drain valves, you've got two levers. This is the uh, main one that will let water into the system. Um, this one opens and closes your drain or fill valve. A little clearer for you. Um, same thing on this side. So what I need to do first is get the air out of this line. So I'm gonna leave these closed. I've already got the water onto this line. I'm gonna open this one. Maybe. Open that one, I'll open this one. Because these are closed, water will flow up and blow out through this uh, hose. And what that's gonna do is any debris that may be inside the line, uh, Teflon tape, pipe dope, uh, little burrs and things like that will get discharged out there here. It'll also get all the air out of line. So I'm gonna open that up. Hear it trickling through. And oddly enough, I'm not hearing it run out. So let's see what's going on here. So I figured it out. I didn't turn the water on. So I've got that water line there on, but I was going to put in the fitting down there to so have the water off on that side, which is why it's not working. I'm going to run down there and uh, hook that up real quick, and then we'll come back and try this again. Okay, now that I went ahead and plumbed in a drain there, so I just had to put a T in, knock down to a half-inch line, so I can uh, turn this on and off so I can drain this out and drain the, uh, the system there. So now I can go ahead and uh, go back and turn all the water lines on. So I can turn that doodaddy on. So pressurized one. I didn't leave anything on. Okay, the pumps had to run a little bit, so we'll go ahead and see if we can purge the line now. Sounds better. Okay, so that run there for a minute or two. Um, next step would be to uh, take my hose and put it on the hot water side and do the same thing. I would close off my diverter and then open up this one, leave this one shut so there's no water running out up in my manifold. What this is going to do is flush out the system itself. So the water will go through it, get all the air out, and then blow it out this hose and on the outside. I'm going to wait to do that because I'm not going to put water in this just yet until I'm ready to fire it up. So I'll wait until I get the uh, uh, exhaust port hooked up and everything. Okay, it's uh, dark outside and the UPS guy just dropped off my um, vent pipe here. So I had to bring the heater away from the wall about a good inch. It's kind of annoying because this is how it was shipped with the bottom warped like that. But the uh, plastic outside is the uh, fresh air pipe coming in. So I've just got this set up so I can mark mark around here and then uh, drill my hole. So my first hole drilled out here, and I just put this paper on top to keep any shavings from getting down inside the system. So now it's got to get in here and spread out the insulation, drill the hole through the outside. I'm going to try and get it down a little bit to the pipe 
lean so any condensation will dribble out the end. Um, if not, if it dribbles back into the system, it has a condensate drain right here uh, to hook up and run that out. But right now, see how level or unlevel I can I can get this in here. All right, don't mind the skeleton hand. We eat our victims. So I've got to get this up there into that hole in here, sitting up there dancing. Now he's been teaching them how to do uh, tap dancing. So she's been practicing her dance. Isn't that right, Sydney? Huh? You're practicing tap dancing? Yes. Yep. Yeah, I think you need to slide the push the top down a little more. Okay, go to your right, just a hair. Okay, hold it right there. No. Nope. There, now it's in. Okay. That wasn't so bad. Yep, I think that's all it takes. Looks like it's in there. Alright. It is like nine degrees out right now. Ugh. Okay, let's go back in, see if we can get some gas and some uh, electricity to this. Okay, so we're almost there. Sid just helped me put this piece in. I was on the outside. She was holding this in here and lining it up. So that's all good to go now. If I get one screw in right there, that'll hold this in place. And I've got to get all the dust off from when I... Um, uh, drilled that hole. I have to connect the vacuum and suck that out and then uh, tighten up my set screws here because this slides in and out There's four screws on the top and four screws in the bottom bracket so you get those uh, lined back up level and tighten and then I also need to Flush out the system inside so I should turn this on it should work I can hear it pushing water out down below and I don't hear any air bubbles blowing through. So let that uh, break the seal, let that hose line drain. I got that outlet right there I need to wire up still, but in the meantime, I brought myself an extension cord. So next thing we need to do is Purge the gas line. I don't have a wrench. I'm sure there's no automatic purge on there. So that's open. So what I would do is basically I would break the seal on this one and get all the air that's in this line to come out right there. And I basically just uh, do that until I can smell gas coming out. Um, that way the, well, it would, the system won't sit there and continue to try and fire and fire over and over again while it's working that air through it. So I'll go buy, or I'll go uh, grab a wrench real quick, pop that loose. Sorry, my lips are cold from being outside. Well, screwed that up. So I turned on the water down below, and I thought, that water sounds like it's running. I hadn't plugged those lines yet, so I just kind of flooded the upstairs. All right, we are in business. Found a couple shark bike plugs. We'll just clean these up so I got some insulation on them. Pop these plugs on there. Go ahead and get my shower head in. And then uh, we should be in business. You can see that has some water leaks down the wall from my little flood upstairs. But like I said, those are empty cavities inside there. And I can look inside and see some drips. But 
there's nothing in that wall I'm concerned about. And that's more what I'm concerned about. So this is open cell foam, and I can see it dripping through that, so I really hope that will dry up okay. Can't see if there's a seam back in there, but it's definitely got some drips. So, not exactly what I wanted to have happen, but accidents do happen, you know. So, I got the water heater is on. I go Teflon tape and put up the uh, shower head and test it out. Well, you have hot water. Still not sure why we don't have. We should have a lot more pressure than that. Change it. Yeah, so that's like not a lot of pressure there. But good enough for now. Sydney, come here. Sydney, come here. Come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here, come here. What? Wanna take a shower? <gasps> Feel it. Feel the warmth of the shower. Is it warm? Yep. Wow, that's nice. Wow. One more luxury added to our list. I know. Don't tell your mom this to be our secret.